I just had a couple of more crashes and corrupted tube and pipe assemblies and I've decided to share my findings. As mentioned before, if you are working with tube and pipe environment and you seem to be getting weird results, it might be because of corrupted tube and pipe assemblies. Some of the symptoms are importing style, report success, but no styles are present. No styles have been imported. Styles have gone missing in styles editor, none present. It was fine yesterday and you started it again and there are no styles anymore present. Changing style would not update roots. Styles um, are not persistent in all the runs, routes, they look different, gap, size, appearance, etc. Uh, you cannot place fittings into routes freely. Any other abnormalities or behaviors different than usual tube and pipe process? As you can see here, I have uh, different uh, results, I've got different gaps on the same styles. I haven't done anything special, but in some places I have 5-10 mil gap, in the others I have none. So in order to fix this you've got a couple of uh, choices. You can use a previous version in old versions or in Vault history. This is not really an option for those that don't have Vault and the problem might be older than the backups in the old versions folder. Um, so now what? In short you need to create a copy of the tube and pipe assembly or if the tube and pipe assembly is corrupted, just the runs or maybe just the roots, depending where, where the problem is. So step one, start working your way down from the main assembly, down to each run, each root, and for that you need to create your own context of the tube and pipe assembly. Option one, create a copy of the main assembly under a different name, and that's because we might still need the original one to save update uh, original files later. We'll get back to that in a second. And option two, create a new assembly, place the main assembly in it and promote all the components except tube and pipe assembly. This is to maintain constraints and relationships between components. Why? Um, these options are necessary and they will create new files for the tube and pipe assembly as well as for all the runs and all the routes. I would use option one, that is create a copy of the main assembly, uh, because promote the mode you lose constraints uh, with the main assembly, as well as any modification in the assembly like parameters or representation, design view, position representation, level of detail, you lose all that. So do a copy, save copy as of the main assembly and um, start working your way down. Okay, step two, recreate the tube and pipe assembly in the new context. So you've created a new assembly and then what you want to do is place the original tube and pipe assembly here. Then you right click on it and select make adaptive. This will create new files, copy, adaptive and activate it as tube and pipe editable files. Make sure you have make all runs adaptive marked on. You will lose all references, including geometry for your roots, but at least and dimensions and some dimensions, but at least you will have all the files created as new in the closest possible configuration to the original one. It's just a matter of reconstraining the roots and reprojecting your references with include geometry. If the tube and pipe was corrupted, sometimes in the copy process it takes the errors with it as well. So then we go to option number two. If you still have problems with tube and pipe, then you need to repeat step one, which is to create a copy of the main assembly. And instead of placing the original tube and pipe, you create one in place. Start a new tube and pipe environment from begin tube and pipe. Save the main, assem main assembly, top level assembly. Um, it's not necessary now, but I go back inside tube and pipe and delete run one. Use place component and place the original runs. They are assembly files as well. So what we're doing is instead of placing the main tube and pipe assembly, the original one, we're just placing all the runs. We save the main assembly again, top level, go back to tube and pipe, right, right click on the run and click and select make adaptive. Repeat these for all the runs.
If you still have problems with one of the runs, then you create a copy of the main assembly, you start the tube and pipe environment, create a new run, and you import just the roots. Yeah. Um, the same thing when you when you use place component, you go to the main uh, uh, top level assembly, save all, go back inside tube and pipe, right click on the root, and select make adaptive. This is the longest and most frustrating, repetitive, time-consuming option, but it's here just in case something goes really bad. Now, things to consider if you experience corrupted files a lot of the times. I would keep the tube and pipe template in design data folder clean. Don't add any styles to it. Don't edit it. This will help you when migrating to newer versions of Inventor. I, I never edit that template. I keep it clean and Every time I need uh, um, a new tube and pipe style, I just import it. I keep all my styles as um, exported XMLs. And don't import them all, just the ones you're going to use. Keep, keep, keep separate XMLs. I have one for ABS, one for PVC, and one for stainless steel, and so on and so on. And I just import the one that I'm going to use um, in the project. Make sure you have all the libraries attached to your project. Yeah. If you're going to use an ANSI uh, uh, styles, make sure that the library is attached to the project. Keep all the styles consistent with Content Center. Make sure you don't have missing libraries, corrupted family tables. Uh, make sure you have proper authored parts, etc., etc. Um, and the last one that I would mention is don't have long folder paths. Tube and Pipe as well as Design Accelerator and FEA tend to create long file paths. So keep your projects as close as possible to the root drive so you don't overpass the Microsoft Windows limit of 256 characters. I just want to show you one more thing. Um, sometimes when you try to make um, some components adaptive, it's not working and it's asking you to save it in the main context, I mean, in the original context, sorry. So you need to open the, the, the main, the original assembly, um, update everything, um, save all. It might, it might be enough that you go to the top level assembly in here, save it, and it will allow you to make it adaptive. So it's working in this case. But sometimes it doesn't and you need to open the original assembly to to perform a rebuild a save and then you will be able to make it adaptive in here thanks for watching um i'll see you next time